All right, hello and welcome to your Pilates Sculpt class today. So all you're gonna need is a Pilates ball. So if you don't have a Pilates ball, there, are, there will be things you can do with like a yoga block. Uh, and if you don't have anything, we'll just work without it. So <laughs> just make sure that you've got um, something to work with. And if not, we'll just do body weight, no problem. We're gonna meet on the floor. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and come onto the floor. And we're gonna come into an L-sit position to begin. So spine is nice and long, you're sitting up nice and tall, your feet are about hip distance apart. Go ahead and take the plies ball, if you have it, into your hands. And we're slowly gonna unravel the spine one at a time as you continue to reach the arms forward. So the moment it gets really hard, reach, 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 reach the arms forward as the ball comes down. Once you come all the way down, bring the ball overhead, tapping the floor. You're gonna bend your knees, feet flat onto the floor, and then you're gonna slowly lift the arms back up. You're gonna place the ball between the knees or the upper thigh region. And again, if you don't have a ball, don't worry about it. <laughs> but you're just placing that ball right in between the legs there. And as you inhale, we're slowly going to tilt the pelvis a little bit so you can feel your low back broaden against the floor and you're really strong there. Now bring the fingertips behind the ears and you're gonna come into an upper crunch position. So you've got the Pilates ball between the legs. And again, if you don't have one, don't worry, just do everything body weight. And then you're bringing the upper body into this crunch position. And we're just gonna lower and lift just the upper body. So just this upper thoracic region, kind of like just an athletic crunch. But then bring the awareness to the connection if you have that Pilates ball by squeezing the inner thighs together. And again, keep broadening that low back onto the floor. And then see if you can't find a little breath to support you. So maybe exhaling as you lift, inhaling as you lower. One more time. Slowly lower your head all the way down. You're going to bring your knees into your chest. Now, if you have the ball, keep it between the knees or the upper thighs. So your legs are now in this tabletop position with your shins slightly parallel with the sky. From here, we're slowly going to tap the feet towards the floor and then bring the knees in towards the chest more. So keep this 90 degree hinging at the knees. Keep the inner thighs squeezing together as you're doing kind of the bottom part of a reverse crunch here. So starting to feel that front core kick on a little bit more, engaging that front body. We're still just getting nice and warm here, so don't overthink it. Don't feel like you have to go all in yet. And the head again is on the floor. The knees are pressing inward, squeezing the prop. Two more. Go ahead and bring your feet towards the floor. You're slowly going to straighten your legs so that your, um, the ball is almost towards the floor. The legs are straight. If they're not already there, bring the fingertips behind the ears. And then go ahead and let go of the ball between the inner thighs. And then bring one foot onto it just so you can slide it out. So it's like right underneath your heels or the um, Achilles tendon or the arch of the foot, whatever feels okay for you. Now lift the upper body into the crunch position. We're gonna use the ball like a roller. You're gonna glide it in so you're, as you bring the knees into the chest, it's just your toes on the ball. And then as you roll it out, again, it'll be behind the ankles on that Achilles region. So roll it in, keep contact with that ball. So you're bringing it in towards the glutes as you roll it in, and then you're extending it legs straight as you extend it out. Draw it in, and then extend it out. Now, as you continue to move there here, really bring the awareness to your core. Draw your navel in towards your spine. Make sure the low back is still broadening onto the floor. So we're keeping this front core engaged nice and strong. Nice job. Take two more here. One more. Go ahead and extend it back out. Reach one leg off the ball, take the other leg off the ball. So now the ball is between the ankles. You're going to squeeze it between the ankles and we're going to go into a double leg lift here. So lifting and lowering. Now, if you need a little extra support, you can slide your thumbs under your sacrum, which will support your lower back a little bit. And you can always lower your head back onto the floor as well, or you can keep it up. I'll leave that up to you, but squeeze that Pilates ball between the ankles, lowering and lifting the legs. Again, bring that awareness to the core, draw your navel in towards your spine broadening that low back onto the floor. You got this. Whew. Really strong here. Now, if you notice your low back arches away from the floor as you lower, just don't lower your legs any more past that point. Maybe you keep them a little bit more upright. 
two more. One more, and then on this next one, bend the knees, lower the feet towards the floor. Take the Pilates ball back between the upper thighs or between the knees. We're taking this all from the top. So fingertips back behind the ears, and we're going up and down with the upper body only as you simultaneously squeeze the inner thighs together like you're pressing them into that ball. And again, if you don't have a prop, you'll do this body weight only and just kind of imagine that sensation of engaging the inner thighs. Now again, draw your navel in towards your spine, broaden your low back onto the floor. Use your breath to lift and lower. Getting that front core nice and engaged, nice and warm. Squeeze those inner thighs. So don't lose the legs as we focus on the core. Keep those inner thighs squeezing towards one another. One more here. Hold at the top. You're gonna take the ball behind the knees and then we're gonna squeeze them in and then tap the feet towards the floor. So it's a little reverse crunch. It's a little different than the last round. The ball's no longer between the knees. It's actually behind the knees. And that's gonna keep us from using momentum by extending the legs to find this reverse crunch. Now, if this variation doesn't feel good for you, feel free to place the ball right back between the knees, but try to keep the distance between the heels and the glute the same the entire repetition. Three, two, Last one, lower it down. You're gonna set your ball down and use just one leg to guide it out so that it can be underneath the ankles as you extend your legs straight. And again, we're using it like a roller. Roll it in as you draw the knees in, roll it out as you extend the legs long. And again, your head can be on the floor or off the floor. I'll leave that up to you. You can hold this isometric crunch or you can release the upper body by just resting the head and shoulders on the floor. But try to zip those inner thighs together. And the ball is a prop supporting you, but really use your core to find the movement here. Imagine you don't have the ball underneath of you. How much core engagement you have to do to have this control of the slow movement in and out. Two more. And then we're going to go into that double leg lift on this next one. So the next time you extend the legs, hold. Release one leg, release the other leg. Grab the ball between the ankles and come into your double body. Maybe thumbs go underneath the sacrum. Maybe they stay behind the head, whatever feels the more supportive for you. And with the ball between the ankles, squeeze it just like we did when the knees were bent between the thighs, engaging the inseam of the leg. Really strong through your core here. Use your breath. Make sure you're not holding your breath here. Three, two, one more, nice job. Bring your knees into your chest, set your ball to the side, but don't lose it. We're gonna keep using it for the rest of the class. Roll it over, we're just gonna come into a high plank real quick. So flipping it over, place the hands under the shoulders, index fingers facing forward. Draw your navel into your spine, hopefully the core is still engaged. Press your heels back really strong here. Take a nice deep breath. And we're just gonna walk this tabletop to plank. So bring your right knee in underneath your hip, bring your left knee in underneath your hip. Take your right leg back, take your left leg back. Now switch your lead legs, walk your left knee in, walk your right knee in, left leg back, right leg back. Now keep this tempo, let's focus on our form a little bit. Make sure you're not looking straight down between your thumbs. You wanna keep your neck nice and long. And try to keep your hips nice and neutral. And the next time you come into your plank hold, now we're gonna cross the body. Right knee comes towards the left arm, take it back. Left knee comes towards the right arm, take it back. Slow and controlled here. Crossing the midline of the body. One more and then come back to your plank. Now walk your feet to touch so it's like your ankles are touching and come right into a plank rocker. So I'm pushing off the tippy toes of my feet. Again, try to avoid that gaze coming straight down between the thumbs, look slightly forward so you have this nice long lying tail to head. Let's go three, two, one and lower your right knee down. Keep your ball nearby. You're gonna keep your right hand down. We're gonna open up to face the long edge of our mats with the right knee down and the right hand down. You're gonna take your Pilates ball on the outside of your left hip 
As we lift the left leg, the ball will slightly roll down, and as we lower, it'll glide back up. Now, if this is uncomfortable on the knee, feel free to put some extra padding, a blanket, or something under that right knee to support you. You can also make a fist on the right hand to keep your wrist nice and neutral. But nice, slow, strong, and controlled here. Keep your chest open to the long edge of your mat. Avoid that temptation to close off towards the floor. Nice. Keep breathing. One more. We're going to hold the leg up. Hold that leg up. Hold that leg up. Hold that leg up. Now you're going to take this ball. Keep your left leg up. You're going to bring it onto the floor. You're going to have your left hand on your block. Or sorry, not your block, your ball. You're going to come onto your right forearm. We're going to bring the left knee in towards the left elbow. We're going to extend it back behind us. Bring it in and extend back behind us. Now we're going to add a front extension. So knee into the elbow, extend in front of you, re-bend, and then extend back behind. Knee to elbow, extend to the front, knee to elbow, extend back behind us. So the left arm is unstable, hopefully providing a little extra challenge. Try to keep those hips nice and open. One more, we're gonna hold the leg to the back nice and long and then circle it for eight, seven, keep that left leg nice and high, six, five, four, three, two, Lower your left arch, inner arch of your foot back towards the floor. Come back up onto your right hand. Pilates ball back to your hip. As you lift, you glide the ball down. As you lower, you glide the ball up. So again, keep yourself nice and open to the long edge of your mat. And if you ever need, if this kneeling position does not feel good in your body, you can always come to lay down. Remember, this is always an option. You never have to stay on the knee and on the hand. If that doesn't feel good in your wrist or on your knee, please feel free to come down off of the hand and the knee. But we're going to come back into that other position. So bring that, keep that left leg up, left hand and ball come to the floor, right forearm. Now, if you're already side lying, you won't change anything. You'll just stay where you're at. Just stay where you're at, laying on your hip. And then we'll bring the knee in, extend, bring the leg back behind us and extend. So I'll show you what that looks like side lying. It's the same thing. Knee to elbow, extend. Knee to elbow, kick back. So it's the same move, just one you have a little less body weight into it. So it's no different. Just listen to your body, adjust as needed. The next time you extend your leg back, whether you're up or down hold, let's circle it backwards. Nice long left leg. Three, two, one, and release. So go ahead and come into your tall kneeling position. All we're going to do is turn. So it's like you're making a big rainbow sweep. Left leg will be forward. Right leg will be tucked underneath of us. Take that Pilates ball in that left hand. Right hand towards the floor. Tuck your right toes under to lift your right knee. You're going to bring your right hand towards the sky, reaching it forward like you're in this nice, long, extended position. Take a nice deep breath. We're going to bring the right hand towards the floor. Now keep your left hand on the ball. Step your left leg back, high plank. Slowly step your left foot back forward. Reach your right arm up again. So move really slowly. And if the ball makes you feel unstable or unsafe, feel free to ditch it completely and just have both hands on the floor. You can also vary this, making it a little bit more accessible by maybe having a chair or step underneath of you so you're not having to go as low bringing the earth up to you sometimes makes things feel a little bit more accessible in our bodies. But we're just basically going lunge to plank here. Let's go one more. Then the next time you plant into that lunge, hold. Ball still under the left hand. We're going to take it underneath the right leg. Take it into the right hand, and then we're going to lift up, straighten both legs. Nice, strong balance. Bend the knee, place the ball in the left hand, switch back to the right hand. Once it's in the right hand, reach that right arm up, straighten both legs like a pyramid pose. Rebend the left knee, take the ball underneath the left, back to the right hand, reaching it forward, and release. One more time here, 
And then we're gonna repeat this whole circuit. So the next time the ball's in the left hand, hold it. Ball on the outside pinky toe of that left foot. Bring your right hand to the floor. You're gonna step your left foot back, high plank, with this offset balance, because the left hand's on the ball. Step the left foot forward, and then lift up into this lengthened position as you reach your right hand forward. But keep your left hand on the ball. Lower your right hand to the floor. Step your left foot back, high plank. Take a breath. Step the left foot back to its lunge position. Reach your right arm forward. Keep the ball in the left hand. One more, just like that, this lunge to plank. And now let's go for our pass through. So pass it underneath the right, or underneath the left. Once the right hand has it, come up nice and tall, straighten both legs. Bend and pass. Lengthen and reach. Now as you lift into this upright position, see if you can't draw your navel into your spine and not turn this into a back bend. One more. The next time you lift up into that standing position, we're gonna stay. Now pop your back foot in maybe an inch or two. Both hands come to the ball. Lower this back knee, eight. Again, no back bend, navel to spine, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold. Now bring the ball all the way to the floor. Keep your left hand on the ball, right hand on the floor. Step back to your high plank, ankles to touch. Take a nice deep breath, and then set your ball up to the side, both hands on the floor. Now from here, cross your right ankle on top of your left. So it's like you only have three points of contact on the floor. We're going to pike the hips up and lower the hips back down to this three-legged plank. Pike the hips up, draw your navel into your spine to achieve it. One more. The next time you come down into your plank, you're gonna hold, we're gonna slowly open the chest to the right side, so you're on your left arm side plank, right arm reaching up high to the sky. We're gonna take this right arm, reach it underneath the body, towards the back wall, and then open it back up. Now you have variations here, you can always lower your bottom leg. And again, all that does is take some body weight out of it and maybe make it feel more accessible to you. But nice, slow, and controlled, pulling the hips away from the floor, strong through the obliques, and then see if you can't match your breath to some movement, so make sure you're not holding your breath. <sighs> One more, the next time you open up hold, we're just gonna lift the hips, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, lower all the way down towards the floor, grab your ball, and come onto your back. All right, we're gonna take the ball into our hand, and we're gonna bring it on top of the left leg. So once you're on your back, bring your knees into your chest, Bring the Pilates ball on the left hand to the left knee. Now you're gonna extend your right leg long as you extend your left leg up to the ceiling. So the legs are kind of scissored. Take a nice deep breath. Right arm is gonna go out to the side like an anchor. So it's straight out to the side. I need to move over a little bit for I'm running into my wall. <laughs> Take a nice deep breath. And now we're gonna slowly roll up and roll the ball up that shin bone on the left leg, lower it back down. Roll it up and down. Now if you want to level up, you can always float the right leg from the floor and hold that there. Whew. But if that's a little too much, feel free to let the right heel rest on the floor. So left leg, left arm. Nice job. Use your breath. Two more. One more. Hold, now bend that left knee, bring the ball into both hands, and all you're gonna do is bicycle the leg. So bring the ball to the left knee, right leg extends, and then switch, switch, switch. Now if you don't have a ball, you're just gonna interlace the hands and use your palms to touch the knees if you don't have a ball. <laughs> so same move, you just don't have the prop. You got it, stay in it, stay in it. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Nice job. Now we have to do the whole thing on the other side. <laughs> so go ahead and roll onto your side, come up. So come into a tabletop position to begin. <laughs> 
All right, so now we're going to do everything on that right side. So we're going to keep the left leg down. So I'm going to show you from tabletop, but then I'm going to turn to face the camera. Extend your right leg back behind you. Take a nice deep breath. So what we're going to do is bring the right hand with the ball to that right side. So from your tabletop, don't feel like you have to turn. We're slowly going to roll and release. So now we're on the left leg, left arm, and the right leg is lifting and lowering, gliding that ball down. Now again, the wrist, if it feels better, you can make that fist, which just takes the flexion out of the wrist, which might feel really nice. Or you can keep the wrist flat if that feels better. And remember your variation here too, you can always come to sideline. You never have to stay up on the hand and the knee. But now we're gonna come down. So ball in the right hand, you're gonna bring that to the floor, come onto the left forearm, knee draws in, we extend to the front, bend the knee, extend it back behind us. Now if you are staying off the floor from the hips, Really focus on keeping your chest open to the side wall, so try not to close your chest to the floor. Remember, if you're side lying, it's a little easier to keep the chest open because it's kind of almost impossible to close it off to the floor. And the only difference is you're taking out a little bit of body weight. <laughs> but it's still very challenging in the side lying position. So listen to your body, do what feels better for you. The next time you extend the leg back, hold, we're gonna circle it back for eight, seven, six, five, four, in three, we repeat that circuit. Two, take that ball on towards your thigh. As you lift, it'll roll down. As you lower the leg, it rolls up. Lowering and lifting this right top leg. Whew. Nice job, stay with it. Ugh. The sides of the booty should be on fire. You are crushing it. Ha. Huh. All right, we're going to bring that ball towards the floor. Come onto your left forearm, and we're going to draw that knee in and extend, knee in and kick behind you. I'm going to come to the sideline position. It's getting very challenging up on the forearm, <laughs> but you do you. If you don't need to come down, stay up. Whew. Oh, I forgot to mention, you could have had ankle weights for all of this if you wanted to level up. <laughs> but I think it's challenging enough. Maybe we don't need the ankle weights today. <laughs> so try to keep that chest open to the side wall, whether you're still up on the forearm and the knee or whether you're side laying. This next time you extend the leg back behind you, hold. We're going to circle back for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. You're gonna do that big arch up and over. So big rainbow sweep, all the way up and over, and then turn. So we're gonna step the right foot forward this time. The ball will be on the outside pinky edge of the right foot. Left hand stays on the floor, tuck your left toes under to pick that knee up. Now keep weight even between the left hand and the right hand. Step the right leg back, high plank. Find that stability, that support, even in this offset kind of wonky, unstable surface. Set the right leg forward. Keep the weight in the right hand on that ball as you reach your left arm straight in front of you. Nice long line from your left fingers to your left heel. Let's keep going. We've got three more, slow and controlled. Two more. Whew, one more. Hold that right leg forward. Take the ball in that right hand still. We're going to cross it underneath. Once it's in the left hand, straighten and lift. Bend and pass through. Switch hands, switch hands, straighten and lift. Again, navel to spine. Oops, losing my balance. So you're not turning this into a back bend. Two more. We're going to repeat this circuit again. One more. The next time that ball's in the right hand, bring it to the outside pinky edge of the foot, left hand to the floor. Let's go four times, plank to lunge, four. Reach the left arm, three. Two. One more. Hold that right leg forward, lift up, cross unders and extend. Bend the right knee. 
Lengthen and extend strong through the core. Whew. One more. Hold it at the top. Bring both hands to the ball. Pop your back foot in about an inch. Bend that back knee. We lower eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring everything back to the plank. Oops, I think I have the ball in the right, wrong hand. Sorry. Ball in the right hand. Step back to your plank. Hold for a breath. And then set the ball off to the side. Both hands onto the floor. You're in your high plank. We're going to wrap the legs. So you've got those three points of contact in your plank on the floor. Draw your navel into your spine. Pike it up. Lower back to your high plank. Navel to spine. Draw your hips up. Slowly lower with control to your high plank. Whew. Legs are crisscross. Now, if the crisscross legs doesn't feel comfortable, feel free to keep both feet onto the floor, assisting you. <laughs> yeah, so we can level up or level down. Listen to your body, adjust accordingly. All right, hold. We're going to open up into that side plank on the right side. Reach that left arm up towards the sky and reach under. Now, remember, you can always lower your right knee to the floor here. Reaching under. Keep your hips up. Really strong through the obliques on the right side. Whew. Two more, and then we're going to lift those hips for eight. We're almost there. Hold it up. Lift the hips. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Lower all the way with control. Grab your ball. Come onto your back. Right hand has the ball, right leg lifts up, left leg stays extended, left arm out to the side for an anchor, roll it up as you crunch, roll it down as you release. Up as you crunch, down as you release. Nice job. Now hold at the top. Take the ball into the hand, the right hand. You're going to take it under your right calf. You're going to scissor switch to your legs. Take it under the left. Scissor switch. Scissor switch. Scissor switch. Scissor switch. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Knees to chest. Roll it up. Take the Pilates ball behind your thoracic spine. Lay it down. Fingertips behind the ears. Little tiny crunches. Now, the ball is supporting us in our crunch, but try not to like rely on it completely, just like we did in our beginning. We want to make sure the core is still doing the majority of the work here. We've got five, four, three, two. Hold at the top. Now, listen, we're going to take the arms overhead, biceps next to the ears. Now, keep drawing your navel to your spine. You're on the ball, but you're not laying down onto it. Bring your knees into your chest. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you extend your legs. You're in a supported V-set. Hold. Ten. Nine. Eight. This is it. Stay with it. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And release. Whoo! <laughs> awesome job on your 30-minute sculpt class. 